Many of us uh, experience the Karoo through simply driving between Johannesburg and Cape Town and at face value it's dry and it's barren and arid but uh, there's an enormous opportunity here to have a positive conservation impact not only on the fantastic species here but also on the communities that live in this landscape. My name is Kurbis Teron. I work for the Drylands Conservation Program of the Endangered Wildlife Trust. Our mission really is to create increased protection of unique habitats and unique biodiversity within the Karoo. To do this, we have partnered with the United Nations Development Program, the Global Environment Facility, and the Department of Forestry, Fisheries and Environmental Affairs to launch a five-year sustainable land management project. For this project to work, we decided to select champions within three nodes within the Karoo. Our first node is in Devoteville in the Northern Cape. Our second node is in Loxton. And our third node is in Anaisburg near Toes River in the Western Cape. Today we'll tell you more about our journey in these three nodes and these three landscapes, the people we have met and the changes that we are bringing about. What makes Nivoteville unique from a biodiversity perspective is the fact that three biomes merge here. The Feinbos biome, the succulent Karoo biome and the Namakaroo biome. This creates extraordinary biodiversity in a very localised spot. Nivoteville uh, is known as the, the bulb capital of the world so there's almost 1,300 bulb species that you can find here. At least 30% of the species are endemic, and most of these endemics are red-listed species. So they are threatened with extinction mostly due to climate change because they, they rely on weather patterns to come up every year. Um, and then there's also farming practices that put them at risk. We are currently in Nivoteville on the farm Popkelsfontein where one of our champions is transforming his 7,000 hectare farm into a protected environment. Ons bly in Nivoteville area, ons is plaas Papkelsfontein. Ek is die sesde generatie op die plaas. Ons gaste bedrijf is die bykie rooibostee, ons het skaap. Ons is bezig om oor te gaan na wolkomponent van die skaap. Ja, dit is bykie wat ons is. Bykie rooibostee, bykie olijwe. In die laatste tyd met die droogte, met die weersomstandigheid, is besef dat dit is nie standhoudend kan jy nie met skaapboer soos ons aangegaan het. Ons moet iets anders te bedink. So die focus het verskuif na, soos die oud tyd, net die skaapboerderij, ek gaan net boer, na gastebedrijf ecotourisme. In die ecotourisme kant het gekom, ons sien, ons, daar is een gaping, ons moet die gaping vul, ons moet meer mense trek, buiten seisoen. Blomtijd is briljant vir ons, ons trek baie mense, daarna moet ons meer mense trek. Toe het ons besluit, saam met EWT, fietserijroutes. Daar was een paar goed op die tafel gelee. Die meest algemene een wat ons allemaal dink, die vinnigste sal redement draai, is fietserij. The Endangered Wildlife Trust and the Provincial Department of Environmental Affairs have been working on biodiversity stewardship for years. And uh, the whole idea on this specific farm was to actually create tangible benefits that are immediately available to landowners so that they can see uh, the changes they are making have um, immediate results. And as such, we propose to develop a mountain bike trail on this farm in exchange for the farmer declaring his farm as a biodiversity stewardship site, in addition to implement a management plan which will ensure that the farm is more appropriately managed for conservation purposes. But it was also a nice opportunity to bring in a community aspect to train young individuals from the community as guides. And on Papkelsfontein, with the scenery in, in that, that they have here, it just lends itself to ecotourism. So it's a great opportunity to diversify income from livestock farming and focus on tourism. And through the stewardship program and joining forces with Endangered Wildlife Trust, who had a champion farmer program, 
Pupkas Fontaine obviously was one of the ones that we had an ideal form to pilot the collaboration on. They are willing landowners that want to conserve this area, they want to protect it and it was a nice opportunity for us to learn from a farmer what's important to them and the same for them to learn what's important for us and how the project can benefit our side as well. JP Leroux, what he by us is, he is in our area, he works with us. There is a good communication between us. I have a good understanding basis, all the group, all the come to us. That works good for us. That works good on Papkels Fontaine for us. In Loxton, we have identified a number of champions who are communal farmers and farm in the Commonage. The Commonage was historically really poorly planned and uh, the grazing management did not allow for rest in the felt. And what we're doing in that specific project is we're assisting communal farmers to refence their farms in such a way that they can actually practice rotational grazing and that they can rest the felt. The way the exchange works between the, the EWT and the communal farmers is that we assist them with the supplies and the materials to build these fences and where to put them up and their contribution is to support with labour and to implement the management practices that they are training on. The Heinings was for us important, because they had to learn of one big camp in a year and then again they had to learn of a big camp and then again in the next big camp. So, I can't say thank you for you, thank you for the Heinings that you have for us. But now can our Rama eat all, or can our Lamerki spin, or can our Gis good eat all. It is not good what we are doing with Lam. Yeah, so the Heinings are for us better by the betekenen. So yeah, I have to tell you all thank you. The added benefit of that is that on Paul's property here, we're close to a drainage area, a riparian area, which is also home to critically endangered river lion rabbits. So there is also that added benefit of benefiting conservation of a critically endangered species. The work that we are doing will ensure that felt is better managed and better managed felt will provide better homes and better habitat for these species. Aside from assisting the farmers with materials for their fencing, we also assist them in terms of training. So we've developed an integrated farm planning course that assists them to develop a management plan for their farms. And this just allows the farmer to better understand how his farming practices influence the environment he farms in. The reason why we promote these training courses is because our work is mostly in rural and remote areas where access to information is very limited. For that reason, we opened the e-learning centre, which makes the information and training available to farmers and community members in the area, which they didn't have access to before to develop skills and to apply for online jobs. Apart from the online training that we have available, we also did a needs assessment with farmers to establish which other skills and training they require. As such, we brought in experts to help the farmers with uh, financial planning. We did a plant identification course, Google Earth training so they can better plan and manage their farms as well as adult literacy classes. The course I'm currently studying is animal production. Before I did the course, me and my father were farming on a whole different strain. We were not looking carefully after our animals the first time around, but this time around, through the course, I actually know what I'm doing and I'm thinking I'm doing better this time. It's working. We believe that learning will lead to a change in action uh, which will lead into a change for more sustainable landscape in the crew. In Anijsburg, 
We have identified a number of landowners who are willing to enter the biodiversity stewardship program and they will be declaring their farms as nature reserves. We are hoping that this large protected area, which will exceed 20,000 hectares, which adjoins the Anaisberg Nature Reserve, will provide new opportunities to create a nature-based economy, which will focus largely around tourism and other guided activities. What makes this Anaisberg area particularly exciting is that already 25 years ago, individuals who bought property in this area had a vision for conservation in this area. And Endangered Wildlife Trust has come into the landscape now to help make that vision a reality by taking the landowners through the process of biodiversity stewardship in partnership with the provincial conservation authorities. So you've got the government authorities, you've got the private landowners, and you've got an NGO all working together for a common goal of conservation. And it's outside of the formerly protected areas, which is what's really exciting. For an iceberg, you know, we're 83,000 hectares and if we can get the farmers and incorporate them into the reserve where we can actually then lift some of these fences, they will benefit by game moving onto their properties. It also gives us our game bigger areas where they can utilise. Going into these agreements with the landowners, I think it's giving a big push into the right direction. And I hope this will actually, other landowners will We'll see what's going on and make them curious and say, this is, maybe we want to be part of that. For me, one day, this will be my dream to see this happen. And, uh, and I would love to see this one day, this reserve grow into this big, big mega type of park. We decided to call our project the Karoo Forever Project because what we really want to do is to preserve these agricultural landscapes into perpetuity. And while they will take very long to respond to the management actions we are putting in place now, if we can change the hearts and the minds and the behavior of people living in the land, then it creates a really strong foundation to enable sustainable land management in the future. My vision for Forum to is that ek nie die laaste ene moet wees hee. Met die manier van boer en hoe ons dit samenwerking met ecotourisme, met EWT, dat ek nie die laaste geslag is dat daar papkelsfontein, gasteplaas, papkelsfontein boerderheid moet voor en toe gaan. Ek moet nog steeds moet ek aan wisselwedding toepas. En, 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 so dat ek kan in die toekomst al sal my kinders hier een dag moet kom oorvat. Of ene kan die ding verbeter dat hulle kan, kan kom sê, ja, alhoewel die droogtes of alhoewel ook die plaan goed die was, is hier nog steeds iets om in aan te gaan. As from now, I am already farming, but in a small scale. Then I would really like in, in future to own my own farm and, 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 and create jobs and, and, and curb poverty. Yeah. Our vision is to work with all the stakeholders in the Karoo landscape. So the landowners, who are the farmers in some cases, other people who are not farming, who have bought properties and own properties literally for the botanical and the spatial beauty. And in working with the government departments as well, the government conservation departments. I think by combining resources, knowledge, skill, we can really be a formidable force for conservation in the Karoo if we work together. When you take the time to actually see this wonderful part of our country, you just realize the fantastic conservation opportunities that the Karoo still presents. In many ways, the Karoo is the future frontier of conservation. If we take the right steps now, if we make sure that land is managed sustainable, we will be able to preserve these wild places in the Karoo, the vast open spaces, the clear night skies forever.